In this video, we will take an introductory look at the loaded core covariate and contingent field methods. The goal of this video is to provide you a big picture view of the field methods collected throughout an entire sample reach. For more in-depth information on how to implement each method, reference the technical reference 1735-2 field protocol. This video will first describe the core loadic aim field methods, followed by contingent and covariate field methods. Core methods are applied everywhere. Contingent methods are only applied where certain problems are believed to exist, and covariates help understand stream potential. The core, contingent, and covariate methods can also be organized by what component of stream health is assessed. In Table 1, the methods are organized by water quality, physical habitat, and biodiversity and riparian habitat quality, in addition to core, contingent, and covariate. Throughout this presentation, we will highlight example applications of the methods to these components of stream health. Loadic aim data are collected within a standardized length of stream referred to as a sample reach. Measurements are taken at the center of the reach F transect, at a series of equally spaced main or intermediate transects, and throughout the reach, which is highlighted in Table 2 of the Loadic aim field protocol. The core water quality methods are all taken at the F transect using a YSI instrument or similar multi-parameter sonde. A YSI measures the conductivity, pH, and temperature of water. Conductivity measures the capacity of water to conduct an electrical charge, which increases with the concentration of ions in a solution. Conductivity is commonly correlated with the degree of salinization or salt loading to streams. Activities such as irrigation return flows can increase stream water conductivity. pH is a measure of hydrogen ions in a solution. The more hydrogen ions, the more acidic the solution, and the fewer hydrogen ions, the more alkaline the solution. Runoff from activities such as mining can decrease the pH of water. Temperature measurements are instantaneous and primarily used to flag any egregious exceedances that could impact biota. In some instances, projects deploy temperature sensors to continuously measure water temperature. Water temperature can control the type and distributions of organisms living in a stream. The core physical habitat methods, also referred to as PHAB, are measured at all 11 main transects. The methods are bankful height, bench height, bank stability and cover, and substrate size. Bank stability and cover and substrate size are also collected at the 10 intermediate transects. Bankful height and bench height are measured to the nearest centimeter from the water surface. The max water depth is also measured at each transect, and together these measurements are used to determine if the stream is accessing its floodplain at a relatively frequent interval. This is important because floodplains dissipate stream power during high flow events and maintain riparian ecological structure and function. Bank stability and cover is measured on both left and right bank and is defined by a plot that is 50 centimeters wide and starts at scour line and ends at the first flat depositional feature at or above bankful. Bank type, cover, and stability are evaluated for each plot. First, plots are designated as either erosional or depositional. Each plot is then evaluated as to whether it is covered or uncovered based on a 50% foliar cover criteria for any combination of vegetation, cobble, wood, and bedrock that provide cover. Finally, erosional features such as fracture, slump, slough, and eroding banks are identified for each plot. If no eroding features are present, the plot is designated as absent. Bank stability and cover measurements are important because they give indications on whether a bank will remain stable or actively erode during high flow events. Activities such as cattle grazing and recreation can alter vegetation cover and composition and directly influence bank cover and stability. If banks are unstable and uncovered, accelerated bank erosion, sediment addition to streams, and channel widening can all occur. The final core PHAB method is streambed particle size, which is measured at all main and intermediate transects. Streambed particles are the inorganic particles, including sand, silt, gravel, cobbles, and bedrock that covers the stream bottom. At each transect, 10 particles are measured at even intervals across the stream from scour line to scour line. Each particle is measured along its intermediate axis, which is the B axis on the figure shown. One reason that it is important to collect substrate is because numerous organisms live in stream bed particles during different parts of their life cycle. 
For example, too much fine sediment can suffocate fish eggs and reduce habitat for macroinvertebrates. Two core PHAB methods are implemented throughout the reach, pools and large wood. All pools within the reach are measured. Pool length, width, max depth, and pool tail depth are measured for each pool. Pools are important because they provide critical habitat and refuge for fish and other aquatic organisms, especially in drought years where water levels can be low. Large wood over 10 centimeters in diameter for at least 1.5 meters in length is counted and recorded. Any large dead wood within bankful or bridging bankful qualifies and is counted. In-stream large wood creates hydrologic and geomorphic complexity and habitat for aquatic organisms. The core biodiversity and riparian condition methods implemented at Lodic Aim reaches are benthic macroinvertebrates and riparian vegetation. Benthic macroinvertebrates cling to the rocks and cobbles or burrow into substrate and are collected by disturbing the stream bed and letting the bugs wash into a server or kick net as shown on the photo on the right. Invertebrates are collected in riffle habitats throughout the reach. If no riffles are present, invertebrates are collected at every transect using the reach wide approach and a kick net. Macroinvertebrates are important because they are a food source for fish and other organisms, and they are good water quality indicators. Riparian condition is measured in two different ways throughout a low decaying reach. Canopy cover is measured at six locations within the stream at all 11 main transects using a densiometer. Stream canopy cover is important because it plays a role in determining stream temperature and stream productivity. Riparian condition is also measured through assessing the presence absence of priority noxious vegetation. Presence absence is measured on the left and right bank in 10 by 10 meter plots at all 11 main transects. The plot is also extended into the stream to the center line to address noxious vegetation that can be submerged for prolonged periods. Noxious vegetation such as Russian olive and tamarisk can alter habitat and geomorphology of streams among other impacts. The next topic covered in this video is covariate methods. The covariate methods, which are used to assist in interpreting other collected lodic aim data, are bankful and wetted width, slope, flood prone width, human influence, photos, and GPS coordinates. Wetted and bankful width are both measured to the nearest centimeter using a tape measure. Wetted width measurements give context on how much water was at a reach at a time of sampling relative to the width of the bankful channel. This gives indications of habitat availability and hydrologic alteration and or drought. Bankful width measurements are used to determine stream size and other geomorphic width to depth ratios. Slope or change in elevation along the reach is measured between transects A and K. Slope is measured because it determines a stream's power and its ability to transport sediment as well as the type of habitat conditions likely to occur. Flood prone width is measured at riffles located nearest to transects A and K that are parallel with the stream valley. Flood prone width provides an estimate of the potential extent of bench or floodplain inundation during a flooding event. Human influence is measured in the same 10 by 10 meter plots as the priority vegetation estimates. The presence or absence of human influence is evaluated for 15 different influences, including roads and vehicles, grazing, and recreation. GPS coordinates and photos are taken at the center, top, and bottom of the reach. A minimum of 16 photos are taken, including a reach overview, monument photos, and critical concept photos, among others throughout the reach. Several covariates for each stream are also derived by the National AIM team using GIS. Examples include climate, soils, vegetation, topography, geology, and geochemistry. The last topic covered in this video is contingent field methods. Some projects will also collect a variety of contingent field methods. Contingent methods are suggested, but should only be collected in areas where they relate to management questions. The contingent methods that may be collected are continuous temperature, turbidity, nutrients, bank angle, pool tail finds, thaw wag depth profile, and quantitative vegetation estimates. Seasonal temperature monitoring is measured by deploying thermistors and is used to track daily, monthly, or annual temperature conditions. Seasonal temperature monitoring is useful to understand potential limitations for aquatic organisms, especially during hot, dry periods. Alternatively, empirical models exist in many regions to predict average summer stream temperature. 
For more information on these models, consult the National AIM team. Total nitrogen and total phosphorus are collected at the F transect using a grab sample. Total nitrogen and phosphorus samples are used as a red flag to understand if more monitoring is needed. High nutrient levels can occur if there are excessive nutrient inputs to a stream from fertilizer or livestock use, which can cause eutrophication. High nutrient levels can also be evidence of accelerated erosion of certain geological formations. Total nitrogen and total phosphorus grab samples have additional protocols for collecting blank and duplicate samples to ensure data quality. Turbidity is measured using a turbidimeter at the F transect. Turbidity is a measure of the extent to which light is scattered when transmitted through water and can provide an approximation of suspended sediment loads. High turbidity levels may result from any land use that disturbs the soil surface and contributes sediment to stream or river systems, such as mining, timber harvest, off-road vehicles. Bank angle is measured at each of the 11 main transects on both left and right bank. Bank angle is measured from where the stream bed meets the bank to the first flat depositional feature at or above bankful. Bank angle is another assessment of channel geometry and bank stability. Thalwag depth profile measures the max water depth along the entire reach. The number of measurements are scaled by the size of the stream and it can be used as a measure of hydrologic and geomorphic complexity. Pool tail fines represent the percentage of pool tail stream bed particles covered by fine sediment. Fine sediment less than 2 mm and less than 6 mm are assessed separately. Fine sediment is measured at the first 10 qualifying pools using a square grid. Record three grid measurements per pool tail crest and the number of grids underlain with fine sediment. The frequency of occurrence of priority native woody vegetation is documented within a 10 by 10 meter plot centered on each main transect. Presence absence of state-specific priority native species are recorded on each bank. If species level riparian vegetation cover and composition data are needed, the MIM or multiple indicator monitoring methods for green line composition are used. Green line vegetation measurements help determine condition and trend of streamside vegetation in relation to the effectiveness of grazing management strategies and other management actions. To collect these indicators, a third crew member, a field botanist, is added to crews and they attend a MIM training. A suggested workflow for collecting all of these measurements is located in the Technical Reference 1735-2 Field Protocol in Appendix F. Generally, a reach is sampled by a crew of two or three and is completed in a day. Sample workflow is highly dependent on the size and difficulty of the stream, but in general, sampling can be broken up into five passes throughout the reach. Once the reach has been set up and monumented, water quality is collected first. Then the first pass is made with one crew member collecting macroinvertebrates and the other collecting frequency of occurrence of priority noxious and priority native vegetation and human influence. If a field botanist is present, start assessing green line vegetation composition. The second pass is used to collect PHAB data where the crew then works together to collect widths, heights, transect thalwag depth, canopy cover, substrate, bank stability and cover, and bank angle. The third pass is used to collect pools, large wood, and flood prone width and pool tail finds. On the fourth pass, slope is measured. This concludes the protocol overview video. For more information about Lodic aim field methods, consult Technical Reference 1735-2 and attend one of the field methods trainings that occur in spring of each year.